This is every way to ruin Minecraft and your PC. If you go to create a super flat world and instead choose for every block in the world to be made out of enchanting tables, none of them will generate with books, which by itself is already kind of ruining Minecraft, but we can push it so much further. Since if you then use the fill commander world edit to reset those enchanting tables, then they'll have their books back and the result will be a lot more headache inducing. Yeah, each of those books wants to take a peek at you and the result is a lot of lag. Plus it's just creepy too. Random tick speed does a lot in Minecraft. If you set the random tick speed to the max of 100 million, then you'll notice that all the mobs around you will freeze in place. Truly, the game just grinds to a halt since it's giving so many blocks in the game a random tick update. And typically these blocks will get a random update on average every 68.27 seconds. But with this increased tick speed, it would be every 0.00002 seconds. And at that point, neither the game nor your eyeballs can keep up with that rate. In the past, we've talked about what's the most damage you can do in Minecraft. And as as it turns out, it's using a TNT arrow cannon like this one. But the truth is, folks, we lied to you. That's not the deadliest thing you can do in Minecraft. I know, I was shocked too. But the reality is, is that if you set up a command block that's always active, running the command, like you'll see on screen in the description below, this means that whenever you shoot an arrow, it'll become the deadliest version an arrow could possibly be. And at that point, forget about critical hits. You're gonna one-shot everything in the game. Just don't one-shot yourself. Since if you shoot an arrow up and hit yourself, in certain versions of the game, that can cause it to completely crash. After all, Steve only has 10 hearts, and with how much damage this does, it might as well just delete the word heart from the dictionary entirely. It's that bad. Withers are one of the deadliest mobs in Minecraft, especially in Bedrock Edition. That is, until you put them underwater. Since truly, if you were to spawn one of these withers on top of the ocean floor, all of that pressure will just completely break the thing. It doesn't even attack, it's just stuck, and it accepts its fate. At that point, I feel bad about killing it, it's just kinda sad. Nah, but getting an easy beacon makes those feelings go away. This is the rarest potion in Minecraft. So rare that you can't even brew it up. There's no recipe that exists for this thing. But if you were to type in this give command to give yourself a potion that has no NBT data, then what you'll get in your inventory is a potion that's completely blank. But you can also get tipped arrows of the same variant. So okay, what do they do? Well, when you drink the uncraftable potion and find out, unfortunately, not much. I don't know what you expected. It literally has nothing special about it. Enchanted in Minecraft might feel random, but the truth is that most random things can be broken down to a random seed gen. Generator. So if we follow after this user Earth Computer's advice, then by taking into account the different enchantment costs of an item, as well as the different amount of bookshelves that are placed around the enchanting table, we can use an external program to figure out exactly what you need to do to get the enchantments that you want. But the way you get them is weird. You have to do a specific action like throwing out a certain number of items. To me, it feels like the way you're supposed to verse jump and everything everywhere all at once. You do something weird, you get a cool power up. It's no different here. Minecraft's FOV can go as low as FOV 30 and as high as Quake Pro, but that's not actually true. Since if you were to go into the game's option text file and then tweak these values even more, and the closer that you set these FOV values down to 180 degrees, the weirder your camera gets, until eventually it's unplayable. And speaking as someone who already thought the game was unplayable on FOV 30, that's saying something. Here's how we can use just one boat and completely ruin your server. Since in certain versions of the game, it was possible that if you placed down a boat on a server and then continuously got in and out of it using the sneak key and the right click button, then eventually we could essentially trick the server into thinking that we're still in the boat while our body goes off and astral projects somewhere else. Meaning we could do crazy things like place these ghost blocks and appear like we're levitating to your friends. Or jump off of high cliffs and take no fall damage whatsoever. And then the best part, if you wanted to instantly teleport back, all all you had to do is just press the sneak key and you'd be right there. Here's how to hold more than 64 items in a stack. Since as Weefy shows off, if you were to shift click a bottle inside of a brewing stand, then it's possible to stack more than one bottle per slot. And then when you go to pick up the stack of bottles from each slot in a row, they'll continue to stack in your hands, giving you a stack that's larger than 64 items in size. And in theory, you could use this to stack up to 2.147 billion items in one hand. So that's the maximum size of the integer value. Though when you go through and make this, don't just place it in your inventory. Since all that'll do is just offload one stack of 64. But if instead, 
you go ahead and drop it, then all of those items will exist on the floor and probably be a mess to clean up too. Never place your bed under the end portal. I know that sounds like a weird place to put it, and you definitely don't want to place it in the end where it would explode, but what's so special about the end portal? Well, by simply having your bed underneath here and then setting your spawn point to it, then you're making sure that every time that you respawn, you're going to be soft locked to only respawn in the end. And that's because of the way the game places you next to the bed when you've set your respawn point to it. And unfortunately for you, even killing the dragon wouldn't fix this, since all you would succeed in doing then is going through the return gateway portal, only for the game to think that it should put you back at your spawn point, thus being the bed, and now you're back to square one. But with less dragons, so now you got one less friend in your infinite nightmare. Now, what you see might look like a lot of beehives, but the truth is, is that it's actually even more bees. Since through the help of commands, we were able to spawn all of these beehives, each of them with three bees inside. And as soon as daytime rolls around, you're gonna see all those bees come out to play. And uh, the results are clear to see. Mostly because your computer's only going to render about one frame per second. And honestly, it's hard to say I'm not jealous. Not of the dying computer, but I respect the bees willing to stick that much to their wake-up schedule that they'll literally ruin the world. We're going to use just one ender pearl to get infinite amounts of ender pearls, and then zero amounts of frames. By setting up a repeating command block, we can type in this execute command so that every ender pearl entity that enters the world is therefore summoning other ender pearl entities, which right now doesn't seem that bad. But as soon as make the decision, or the mistake I should say to throw out an ender pearl, we'll quickly have more than 16 of the things. Then after seeing this, maybe it's for the best that endermen don't always drop ender pearls. Clearly they're a lot more powerful than we ever thought. If you've ever overpopulated your farm, you're aware that Minecraft has something called the Entity Cramming Limit, which is that if you have more than 24 mobs in a specific space, then if you add one more, the game won't allow it. It'll just apply constant damage until you die. Which is great for traps, but not as great for breaking Minecraft. And while you can change this with a game rule, you can also break this limit in survival. All you have to do is just place down a vine, since by just using any climbable ladder in the space of the block, we can get a stupid amount of mobs into this one spot. And if you really want to give your PC a jump scare, all you have to do after this is break one of the blocks and close in the hole, and then all of those mobs will spill out and prove that maybe it's for the best that this limit's in place. Boats and lava don't mix. So why does this one not burn? Well, since boats are entities, we can summon them in with a command like this. And then by putting in vulnerable in the tags here for the NBT data, that boat just isn't gonna die. And you'll see as much when we get out into the lava. It doesn't even sink down into the fluid. We're able to just skate across, no worries. Which might be even cooler than using boats to jump across the lava like this. Though if you want to switch to survival and try this out, I will mention that you need fire resistance. The way that your hitbox is, you dip a little bit too low into the lava, and unfortunately, even though the boat's invulnerable, it doesn't mean that you are. So apply some magma cream before you try this. This house is built entirely underneath the void, but how? Well, as Mr. Cat shows off, if you use command blocks in just the right way, we're able to build a house entirely out of entities that still looks like one that we'd build up in the overworld. The first trick to doing this is using falling block entities. Since those don't just have to be sand and gravel, we're actually able to change their NBT data so that it looks like any block that you choose. But by themselves, you're just gonna walk or fall right through them. So the real kicker here is putting an invisible shulker in the same block as our falling block. And even though shulkers are mobs, we're able to walk on top of them with the right collision box. And after a frankly grueling amount of time to set all this up, it is possible to have your own house down here in the void. And as long as you don't fall too low, you won't even take damage if you're standing on top of it. Here's why the hanging sign might be one of the deadliest blocks added to Minecraft. No, I'm being serious. If you boot up Bedrock Edition and place a hanging sign like this, then by throwing a channeling enchanted trident into it in the right angle, You'll see that the trident gets stuck, but it's not deadly. At least, you think it isn't. That is until you have an entity actually walk underneath it. At that point, the trident thinks it's supposed to spawn some lightning, and any mod that comes close enough to it will be struck by lightning many times a second. And then what your friend thought was just a simple store selling tridents quickly turns into a funeral home. Their funeral home. Extra glitches have been possible in Minecraft from plenty of different updates. But the simple one got patched out using the composter and a piston. But don't worry, because here's how we can use that same piston to still achieve some x-ray. Instead, all we gotta do is use a trapdoor so that we make ourselves crawling, and then use a piston to push a slab into our crawling self while we're surrounded by other slabs. At that point, we can look down and all around and see plenty of caves that are underneath us. Unfortunately, the x-ray doesn't also come with Fulbright. It's not a hacked client. But if you need to know which caves you need to light up so that your mob farms the fastest, this could be worth using, at least until Mojang patches it out again. 
And while a world made out of enchanted tables is bad enough, one made out of drip leaves gets even crazier. Now, while we could make this only one block thick, the better results that you'll see here are made from thicker and thicker layers of drip leaf. Since as soon as we spawn in and step on our first victim, that block update will cause the drip leaf underneath us to realize that it's not staying on a supporting block. And so, it pops off as an item. And then this happens again to the next drip leaf, and then again to a few more drip leaf, until eventually we create a ripple of destruction throughout our world. It's like the opposite of watching grass grow on a field of dirt blocks. Instead, you're watching a bunch of drip leaves learn their dirty secret. None of this is real. We live in a simulation. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. <laughs> And after we've broken the entity cramming limit, we can use that for some more fun with a couple of skeletons. And if you thought all the entities that were just stuck inside of that one block space was bad enough with the skeletons, then the fact that each of them's created an entity of their own when they shoot off an arrow, it's gonna quickly get noticeable how bad the frames are dropping. And now every time that they're shooting you, they're essentially doubling the amount of entities. So, uh, good luck to your computer. If you're able to fill up a shulker box full to the brim of netherite, you're probably feeling pretty good about yourself. And if you're able to fill up a double chest full of shulker boxes just like that, then come on, you're on top of the world. Until, of course, you break that chest and it's over lava. Because at that point, even if our netherite doesn't burn, the shulker boxes sure do. And since each of these double chests is able to hold 93,312 items, that means that with the way that Minecraft creates item entities, that's 1,458 stacks of items that you gotta worry about in your world. Which I know it's all netherite and that should be a good thing, but when your computer's about to put you back in the Stone Age, you won't be too thankful for your luck with ancient debris. It's really just gonna be a hot mess. So far, nothing seems wrong about this world. Maybe a little boring, but nothing hold against it. But uh, yeah, don't look up. Since with the help of commands, we're able to set up a sheet of anvils that's gonna drop down at us at any second. And while they're falling down to the ground, those anvils count as entities. Which, for one, is gonna give you a lot of lag. And then that'll get even worse as soon as those anvils start to hit other mobs underneath them. All of a sudden, you not only got a lot of anvil entities, but you've also got a lot of item drop entities being caused by the mobs getting killed. Oh, and not to mention the sound, too. You might want to unplug your headphones before you try this in your world. Or really, just unplug your whole PC. It'll have the same effect as this does. Finding an end city's tough, but this will make you feel lucky if you never see one again. Since by using the slash place command to place down an end city structure, well, sure enough, get an end city. But we don't have to just type in that command once. And we don't even have to be the one to type in the command. And at that point, if you have a command block doing this over and over again, each of these random end city structures is gonna overlap with itself. And at that point, the results get pretty ridiculous. It almost looks like the moon base that Mojang had us build in the last April Fools. I wonder if that's where they got the inspiration for it. But all of those are simple ways to ruin Minecraft. So if you really want to completely destroy the fabric of what holds Minecraft together, you can always download the No Cubes mod, which is a mod that completely changes how voxels look in Minecraft, which is a fancy way of saying it looks so much more cursed. And at this point, I'd prefer my game crashing over having to look at this. And with that, folks, YouTube thinks that you might like this video. So see if they're right and have a good one. All right.